one of the great things about these modular synthesizers is the fact that um, you have to patch things one thing to another. And so you really have to think through the process of synthesis. You know, here is this is producing a sound, this is an oscillator. Right? And then I can manipulate it in this way, this way, and this way. And you think through the chain of events, the sound chain. So that's why I'm going to go back to zero and build up one thing at a time, which is the way this gets done, even for me, as you know, I've been using this machine for many years. So the first thing we want to do is find an oscillator, right? Because we want to produce a sound. Mm -hmm. We want to produce a tone. And there are very idiosyncratic names to many of the modules in the Buchla. So while we may learn about envelope generators and that kind of thing, um, we have something on the Buchla called a dual attack generator. Well, that's essentially our envelope generator. Uh, instead of an oscillator, he's got dual sine sawtooth generator, which is pretty self-explanatory. You know, they're oscillators. Dual because each side of this module produces a separate tone that can be uh, tuned. So let's start with that. Okay, two kinds of cables on the Buchla. Uh, there are these mini plugs, which are the audio cables, and the audio path is uh, rooted this way. And then there are control cables, which have banana plugs. And that's these, right? And these yeah. are for voltages, triggers, and uh, other and continuous voltages. Triggers are pulses, rather, which you set things in motion with, and voltages for controlling other aspects of sound. And these are separate paths, so they have separate inputs and outputs, different colors. Pulses or triggers are red. Voltage inputs and outputs are black. And the audio, it's self-explanatory. These silver ones here, and it'll become even clearer as I go through it. So we want to first start by just getting an audio out from an oscillator. And these are the tie lines that go into our mixer here. And we've just got left and right patched in, one and two here, mixer one and two. And I'm just going to use one, which is pan to center, so it will come from all of the speakers, hopefully. And yeah, there it is. Right? Now that doesn't sound much like a sine wave. That sounds more like a triangle. Yeah. It's in fact a sawtooth wave. Because these oscillators yeah. put out, pretty annoying, huh? No, uh, put out a <laughs> sine wave, and it's a variable harmonic output from sine to sawtooth. Let me bring this up a little. So that's as close as we're going to get. Sine wave is a theoretical construct anyway. You know, it's right. always an approximation. Yep. Adding harmonic content. Notice, as I add harmonic content, what happens? Louder. Louder. Yeah. It's more energy. More, more harmonics. More energy. Louder. More amplitude. Okay, great. So that's not very useful. Although you could. Down here's where you tune them. You, you could. They're not very stable oscillators, but. You could tune them and quick record it and then use that sound and say, okay, I want a different timbre. Let's change it. Wait, what do you mean it's pitch? not stable? You mean it, it. Well, in other words. Oh, I see. <laughs> pitch one. Change it yeah. pretty readily. And even if you find. It's changing now, right? I mean, they shift, they drift. Yeah. Okay, there are some shortcuts we learned with these to. Uh, to try to stabilize the oscillators if you really want to tune them. But that's not the first lesson. Okay, <laughs> so um, how can we make this more useful? We want to shape it, right? So um, it would be help really helpful if we could uh, have an envelope generator. Yeah. So you, you take the audio output of that and you put it, there are actually two more modules that you need to create an envelope. The first is this just want to come voltage here, control so gate? Like I'm standing in front of you all the time. Oh no, no, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so the two modules that you need, uh, you need the attack generator, which is the actual envelope generator. It's going to put out uh, the voltage shape yeah. that will shape the amplitude of the sound, and that is going to control a gate. And the gate, what does a gate do? It opens and closes. 
and it's going to open and close according to the shape of the voltage that this puts out. Yeah. So we have to put our sound into the gate. Right now the gate's closed. We need another audio cable. And if you ever get stuck and you're not getting anything as you go, go back to testing right from the oscillator and make sure you've got output. Yeah. Because some of these are a little dirty, very dirty, as you can see. Okay. So we'll go in here. And now we have to trigger that gate. Um, the first thing we could do, we could avoid the envelope altogether, in fact, and just trigger the gate, open it. And we would need, notice this is black. So we need a voltage of some sort to open up that gate. And we could get it from these controllers. Again, uh, Don Buchla, I think wisely, doesn't call them keyboards, because keyboard would evoke a kind of mm -hmm. organ or piano model. He calls them touch-controlled voltage sources, to make it very generic. And this one has three mm -hmm. voltage outputs available, these pairs of outputs A, B, and C. A is this row of, of um, pots here, dot, dials here. B is this row. And C is finger pressure, which I'll show you later. It's kind of cool. Um, so we could simply put that here, an output from A, say. And there I've opened the gate. And I can close it. OK. Mm -hmm. Can we adjust here that adjusted the gate once it's on? So it's just, a, it's just an amplitude yeah, gate? Yeah, it's going to open and close according to the voltage, right? So here I'm changing the voltage okay. by hand. And I'm actually making a shape, an amplitude shape, which is what? An envelope. Mm -hmm. So I want to automate that process. Yeah. So I'm going to use this keyboard now simply to trigger this attack generator, which is going to put out a varying voltage over time that I can shape with these pots here. So, I trigger, let's not do that, let's trigger this, I trigger to the trigger input, and the output from the generator to here. Does that make sense? Mike, can I see that again? Yeah. So, we're going to trigger the dual attack generator okay. by taking this trigger here. Okay. And that's going to set this in motion, and the shape of the voltage will vary according to this attack, decay, and then duration setting here. And there's some other tweaks I can do. I can show you other niceties. But basically, instead of sitting here and turning this like that, I'm going to do it automatically. Um, I'm going to automate the process. So, okay. And that's a sharp attack. But if I make a longer attack and a shorter decay, um. Right now, the uh, so just trigger think. is set according to how long I hold it. Mm -hmm. But I can also set the duration to be controlled here. Yeah, if it works. And now it's between 0.01 and 5 seconds in duration. It's all, it's all adjustable. So I'm just triggering it now. I'm just pushing a button to start it, and the shape is being created here. Now, if you wanted a slow decay... I set a longer decay, again, between 0.01 and 5 seconds. Yeah. Cool. And a longer sustain before the decay. Longer Gets to maximum voltage. In terms of opening this, stays, and then decays. Yeah. Okay. That's great.